Hi everyone, uh, I got another video here in my series on this IBM RS6000. Uh, like I said in the introductory video, I got this thing off of the Lake College Surplus probably almost 10 years ago. I got it at uh, 2002 for some of, I believe, $100. This is um, an IBM RS6000 Model 390. Uh, excuse me, it's a... <coughs> Boy, I wish this camera could focus in on it. It says 7012 IBM 390. Um, it sports a 67 megahertz power 2 processor. It has 512 megs of RAM. It has 2 megabytes of L2 cache, which is incredible for its day. And by the way, its day is 1994. Um, unfortunately, I don't exactly have a comparison machine from 94 to give you an idea of, you know, what it was up against, but they considered this thing an incredibly powerful either server or graphics workstation in its day. I've got it set up with IBM's AIX version 5.1, the last version of uh, AIX that's supported on this machine. Um, it is, of course, connected into a 17-inch color, <clears throat> because apparently that wasn't necessarily a given in those days. CRT monitor. Um, it's sitting here at the uh, CDE login. Um, I've also had it hooked into a serial terminal uh, for management and software installs and things like that. You wouldn't normally need the serial terminal, but pretty much you have to use it for anything, any sort of setup. Um, back to the machine itself. Uh, floppy drive, of course, 1.4 megabytes. Um, in the entire time I've owned it, I don't think I've ever used it. I have no idea if it works. Um, below that is a cartridge-based uh, excuse me, CD-ROM drive. Uh, what's interesting about that is it's a 4x drive, and it, instead of using a tray to mount the CDs, you have these cartridges that load a disc. I'll do this one-handed, but basically it's this tray mechanism. This is incredibly common back in the day. So there's your normal CD, and it went inside this cartridge like that, close that down, and then this whole mechanism would go inside of there, like that. Um, from what little I've seen, it's a little bit like a magneto-optical drive, but of course not writable. Um, so we'll pull that back out of there. Beneath that is an exabyte, 8 gigabyte tape drive, and it uses tapes that look a little bit like hard drive, a little bit like this. Things are pretty damn big as well. Um, there you go, eight millimeter. They, you know, it looks a lot like a little VCR actually. The um, cartridge like that. They are similar to a Hi8 videotape, which was a similar technology, but Hi8 tapes used a different um, media type. You had, you couldn't use a videotape for these. Um, I'm just looking here for something for a size comparison to see just how big these things are. Um, okay. Standard salt shaker. Why is it in my living room? Couldn't even tell you. But that's how big those tapes are in comparison. Um, <laughs> salt shaker is size comparison. Hey, why not? Um, yeah, as you can see, I've got it set up. Um, it's up and running. Uh, let's see here. We'll take some of this stuff out of the way. <clears throat> Pointing out some of the features in the front, like I said, floppy CD-ROM tape and then your power button. Um, this black window is actually an LED display. Um, think your postcodes on PCs and old IBM PCs. Uh, this will display all kinds of codes when it is booting. Um, a reset button with some of the strangest um, symbols. It's an R with a circle around it slash the arrow that points down. Maybe shut down? I don't know. Um, there's a key. The key is actually very important. If you want to get an RS6000, make sure you get the keys. Um, because you need the key in order to move between... Right now it's in OK mode, which is a standard boot. You have a secure boot where you can turn it on, um, but it won't boot. And then you have maintenance mode. Um, you can theoretically just get in there with a screwdriver and just beat the snot out of that lock, but it is a Medeco lock. I mean, these are, they spent a lot of money on these things back in the day. Um, but also, that 
latch key latches into the top cover. So very important to have to pick one of these up, otherwise you're going to have to do some um, major construction work to get them out. Um, I'm going to just do a vague overview here of the outside of this thing. I'll tell you what, I'll even log in here. Root password. Should get me in. There we go. Starting the common desktop environment. Um, it's not the fastest thing in the world, 67 megahertz, like I said, but um, I ran this uh, with AIX as a web server, of my own for pfft, I think from 2002 to 2008. Um, before that, it was used as a uh, development workstation for the IT department of the college. Um, it uses a standard PS2 keyboard and mouse. It's got an IBM keyboard on here, um, and then I have a Wise Tech optical PS2 mouse. So I've I've hooked that up so that it'll uh, be a little bit more reliable than the old ball mice. Um, I've got it mounted vertically right now. It does take a bit to log in for whatever reason. Anyway, um, I've got it mounted vertically on a pedestal right now, but when I shut it down in a couple of minutes here to show you, excuse me, we'll show you uh, the insides. I'll uh, take that off so that we can uh, see what's going on inside of there. So, we'll kill a couple more seconds here while that thing finishes loading. Oh, there we go. And, voila! Uh, CDE, you've got a file manager there. you got your taskbar down here. Uh, fire up a terminal. They got you with these systems. I mean, yeah, you have a graphics environment, but really, there are no graphics applications on here. You have a notepad and you have a file manager sort of equivalent, but I don't have anything else really loaded on it to take advantage of the graphics. So it is what it is at this point. So, all right, I'm going to shut it down and uh, power it off and take off the cover, and I'll uh, join you in a second. So stay tuned for part two of this video.